these entitled parents and their entitled friends are wreaking havoc in this hotel and making the staff and guests suffer. So this clever hotel employee decides to play some revenge and seek justice for all. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamp show. My hotel allows more than two people to stay in a room. However, if there is more than two adults in the room, it bumps the price more than $10 each adult. So if you have five adults in the room, it's an extra $30. I usually don't up the price unless there is a manager nearby, only because our rooms are pretty expensive as it is. It's a pretty normal day coming into the hotel, about 30 check-ins, so it's nothing special. This lady comes in, entitled as anything, and asks if I have any rooms available. Just for tonight? Yes for tonight. Like, I'm going to stay in this crappy town for a day longer. <laughs> yeah, this town can be pretty boring, but it can be nice at times. How many adults and children are going to be in the room? Why does that matter? I don't tell people the price difference if they have more than two adults in the room. Otherwise they lie and say they have two, when in reality they have four. Oh, it's in case there is a fire and the fire department needs to know how many bodies are in each room for rescue. This is actually true. That's ridiculous. I have two adults and one child. At this point, I know she's probably lying, but since I am in a good mood, I let it slide. Okay, so my king standard is going for 144 plus tax, and my two queen standard is going for 134 plus tax. But that is outrageous. Can't you give me a discount? Do you have triple A or military? No. Unfortunately, I can't bring the price down any lower unless you have one of those things. Fine, I will take it. The other hotel chain across the street is way better, but that's they're sold out. Okay, may I see your ID and your debit or credit card? The check-in process ensues and I put her in a room on the first floor near the pool because she requested it and I didn't want to hear any complaints. This lady has asked for so many things to be taken up to her room. Extra towels, extra blankets, soap, better pillows, room service up the wazoo. But then she gets frustrated when I let her know we aren't a full service hotel and we can't give her room service. She has to come down and get it herself when there are no housekeeping working and it's just me. I can't leave the desk unattended unless I have to. At this point, I'm getting pretty frustrated with this lady. I get a call from the room next door saying that her room is being pretty noisy and they need to keep it down. I go ahead and call her and the conversation is as follows. Hi, is this B? No, this is her friend. What do you want, lady? I actually received a noise complaint. Would it be possible? B, do you hear that? We got a noise complaint. Time to be louder, huh? Heck yeah. Frick Look at those jerks. At this point, I can hear them from down the hall. More noise complaints ensue. So I start heading over towards her room and I feel my chest vibrating with crappy music coming from her room. I knock on the door. Front desk. What the heck do you want, lady? If you keep bothering me, I'm going to have to speak to your manager. I notice that she has not one, not two, not three, but four extra adults in the room. She even had a couple dogs in the room. Pet fees are mandatory and cost $25 per pet per night. She agreed to that when she signed her registration card when she checked in. I'm sorry miss, but it is a little loud in here. Would it be possible to keep it down as to not disturb the guests in the neighboring rooms? No. Why the heck would I do that? I paid to be here, as did these other guests. I am going to ask you to comply or you will be evicted. Hey friend, you hear that? She wants us to leave. Well it sucks for her now, doesn't it? We will just have to leave then. They slam the door in my face and I can hear them thrashing the place. I go back to my desk and calculate the actual cost of her room. In total, her room was originally around 155 after taxes. After what I did, it brought it up to 280, including the extra adults in the room, which was around $50, the two pets, which was another 50, and I also kept her security deposit to the amount of the mess in the room. I didn't actually input into the system yet though. I wanted to wait for her to come down and physically check out first. About 30 minutes later, she comes down. Hi, yes, we want to check out. Okay, did you enjoy your stay? Of course not. This place is complete garbage. And even looking at you has made it worse. Oh, well, I apologize for that. Would you like your receipt? The total was 155. How could it be that much? We only stayed for four hours. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me calculate the actual price for you. I put in all the proper stuff into the system and it comes out to 280 and some change. So the total is 280. Would you like your receipt printed? What? 
How the heck did it go up in price? Well, for starters, you lied and said that you had two adults and one child in the room. I forgot to mention how if you had more than two adults in the room, it ups the price $10 per adult. I counted seven adults, so that's around $50. I also noticed you had two dogs in your room. When you signed your card, you acknowledged our pet policy of $25, which is non-refundable per pet per night. I also noticed that you thrashed the room, which calls for security deposit to be taken out to cover the damage that you caused. Would you like the receipt printed? Excuse me, who the heck do you think you are talking to? I want to speak to your manager right now. Okay, well you're going to have to wait until tomorrow, seeing that my GM doesn't get here until tomorrow, and I'm the only one on duty. I'm going to ask you to leave until she comes in tomorrow though. When your manager gets a load of what you've done, you are going to get fired, and I'm going to get my darn refund. Okay, good luck with that. Have a good day. I was thinking how could you sneak an additional five adults and two pets in into the hotel, but most hotels actually have directly from the car park to the rooms without having to go through reception. So I could actually see that happening. But then there's just the moral question of why? You know, obviously they're there to have fun and party. But if there's that many of you, you can all pitch in to pay the extra bucks and then you wouldn't have to worry about getting caught. I don't understand why these people break the rules and then do the most obvious things to be getting caught. I've been living in this neighborhood for a couple of years now. My neighbor just recently got a dog, a young black lab, and decided to start taking him on walks. You can probably tell what's coming next. For some context, I have a dog, a mutt to be exact. He's a very good dog and wouldn't hurt a fly. I frequently take him on walks and clean up after him every time. I walk outside to collect the mail one morning and notice a decent sized piece of dog crap staring at me a couple feet away from my mailbox on the sidewalk. A little peeved, I fetch a plastic bag from my house and dispose of it. At this point, I wasn't sure who the culprit was, as there were a few neighborhood dogs around. A couple of days later, I happened to see my neighbor walking his dog in front of my house. No big deal, he can walk his dog if he wants to. A few hours later, I go outside to mow the lawn and notice another turd on the sidewalk. A little annoyed and with pretty good confirmation on the party responsible, I finish what I'm doing and clean it up. The next week, I notice that the neighbor walking his dog again. On the first lap around the neighborhood, the dog lays another turd on the sidewalk and they both keep on moving. I go outside and pretend to water my lawn. When the neighbor comes back around, I politely remind him that it would be nice if he could pick up after his dog. His response to this was along the lines of, It's a public sidewalk. I can do what I want, man. Annoyed, I take this as a loss. Return inside and clean up the poop later. A couple of weeks later, the same thing happens and the same confrontation. This time I spoke to him before the dog did his business and he muttered the same kind of response. A few days after that, while I was walking my dog, I hatched a plan. My dog had done his business on our walk. I cleaned it up placed it in a small plastic bag, and when I got home, emptied the contents of the bag into a small bin in my backyard. I continued this, using the crap from my dog and the crap his dog left on my sidewalk. I did this for about a month before I decided I had enough in the bin. I made sure to wake up bright and early in the morning, and I picked up the bin and shovel, walked across the street into the neighbor's yard, and emptied the contents of the bin on his sidewalk, making sure to cause as much carnage as possible. Later in the day, I heard banging on my door. I opened my door and not too surprisingly, the neighbor was standing there, berating me about how ridiculous I had been and that I needed to clean his sidewalk immediately. Much to his dismay, I replied with, it's a public sidewalk, handle it yourself. I said this with a crap eating grin, no pun intended. He stormed off and I closed the door. Later in the week, I saw him spraying down his sidewalk with a pressure washer while out walking my dog. This is a petty review revenge story, but it's almost borderlining pro. Like there was a lot of thought and effort that had to go into this. And you're dealing with crap, so there's that factor in as well. My favorite revenge stories have to be the ones where they quote the same line back to the perpetrator. What do you think though? Do you think he still could have gotten in trouble for doing this? It was a bit risky, but I guess it was a pretty big payoff as well. My sister, father, and I were all low on cash. I had a low paying job at school. 60 bucks every two weeks. My sister didn't have a job at school and my father was paying my mother child support. Despite this, we all wanted to have a good holiday and I told my mum that I could only afford to get her one or two things that year. She said that was fine and internally I knew it wasn't. My mother's love language is gifts. 
if you don't give her an equal amount back in items or price, she will yell and tell you that you don't love her. I'm 21 now, and this has been going on for as long as I can remember. Christmas passes without much fanfare, and a gift I have ordered before the holiday was coming late, which I explained to my mother. It got to her, and she was annoyed. She called me at work, and this was the conversation. What the heck did you send me? What? What are you talking about? What the heck is this crap? A mug? The mug had a cute motif design of our states. We live in different ones. What am I supposed to do with this? I can't use it. I'm sorry, do you want me to... Every freaking holiday it's the same. You and your sister and your freaking father don't care about me at all. You don't love me. You don't freaking care. I'm up here alone and you're being so selfish. It should be noted that I have an anxiety disorder, and it gets bad when my mum yells like this. She knows this, but never stops. She yelled at me for crying, saying she didn't want to deal with me, told me to never contact her again, saying screw you, and hung up. A lot more happened that night, including her harassing my sister, and threatening not to pay for our schooling anymore. A month passed and she came down to our school, acting like everything was fine, and she didn't tell her children we were terrible. We went to Walmart, and when we were in the electronics section, my mum asked my sister, Where's my Fitbit? My mum wanted one for Christmas, and while I couldn't afford one, my sister said she would, as she worked at her old job over break. My sister looked at her point blank and said, I sent it back, and kept looking at merchandise. My mum was ticked off, and still is to this day. I asked her later about it, and she said, She told me I was a horrible excuse of a daughter, and that I'm a selfish, terrible child, and that she didn't want to see or hear from me. She told me screw you, so I sent back her stupid watch and got it refunded. My mum treats my sister worse than she treats me, and always has, so I understand why she did it. Someone having the love language of gifts is a legitimate thing, but then demanding or expecting someone to give you gifts? That's a totally different story. That's like demanding someone to say I love you. People will express how they care about you and show affection for you in a variety of different ways. It's important to communicate it for a healthy relationship, but if you feel entitled or demand someone show affection to you, then you're only going to cause more troubles in the relationship than you think you're trying to fix. Because you're not trying to relate to them, you just want something out of them. I occasionally have Airbnb guests that stay at my place, because it helps with the rent. Most cause no trouble. However, this one group really pushed it. It was a father and son on holiday. As soon as they came in, I knew his son was a gamer. To be fair, I am too. But this little crap downloaded 50 gigabytes of stuff in the first night. No wonder my Netflix was slow that evening. I kindly asked them to not do that, as it consumes all the bandwidth. His father said that because the listing had wireless internet listed as one of the amenities, they were free to do as they wish. I told them that it shouldn't be considered unreasonable not to consume dozens of gigabytes per day. The father scoffed at this notion. The son didn't seem too interested in lowering his consumption either. Night 2? Same thing. The internet had slowed to a crawl. I was beginning to wonder what this guy was doing with all that data. So I used a packet sniffer loaded on my router using custom firmware. He was streaming something, presumably at 4K, because regular HD streaming consumes nowhere near that amount. I kinda left it to be for a bit while I worked on a paper for one of my classes. I heard some noises coming from their room, and deduced he was playing some kind of eSport game, based on the things he was saying, probably into a voice chat. Revenge time. I terminated his connection. His father came out and banged on my door. What the frick is wrong with your internet? I don't know. Maybe I've blown the data limit for this month. Shame that it'd be, considering you lot used 50 gigabytes yesterday. A white lie. My ISP doesn't turn off the internet. It only halves the speed through the cap and was indeed exceeded. Open the darn door! He continued banging on the door for a few minutes before giving up. I got a scathing one-star review for that guest, but I don't care, because I still maintained a 4.9 average, and I got the satisfaction of knowing the jerk probably got hammered for leaving in the middle of a match. If you've ever stayed at an Airbnb, or really anywhere that promises Wi-Fi, I don't really think there's anywhere where there's an expectation that you'll have unlimited data and unlimited bandwidth. I feel like if you're hosting an Airbnb, you should probably work out a way to cap their bandwidth 
so it shapes the speed that they download at, and maybe the data that they have, because otherwise you will get people like this who will abuse it. I'm not saying what they did was right, but if it's not explicit how much or how little you can use, they're going to obviously use as much as they can. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.